located here at UT Southwestern Medical Center, although I'm not at UT Southwestern. Today we're at the city of Dallas, Grawweiler Grawweiler Pool. Grawweiler Pool. And we're excited to be here. We're going to be talking about sun safety and how you can protect your skin from sun cancer. We've got Joelle Simmons from the city of Dallas, of aquatic department, as well as Dr. Jennifer Gill, who is a dermatologist at UT Southwestern. And we're really excited to be here. It's definitely thank the city of Dallas for using it, letting us use this space. We do have a couple reminders. As usual, make sure you, know, you write your questions in the comment section of your feed. We're going to take as many as we can get to, and we're going to go for about 25 minutes. So get those questions rolling in now. I think to get us to get us started, a question that came in ahead of time, and that is really a general question, and that's for both of you. But I think we'll start start with you, Joelle. Sure. And that is why is sun protection. Sun can cause dehydration, too much sun is no fun, it's a big water safety uh, topic that we utilize here in our swimming lessons and um, can cause, like I said, dehydration, sunburns, um, heat exhaustion, um, or heat stroke, and um, yeah, I mean, overall, your skin is the biggest organ uh, you've got, so you want to protect it and um, hopefully prevent wrinkles or prolonged skin damage, right? <laughs> So what about you? Yes, so I think of a couple things when I think about um, sun safety, and the first one is skin cancer. So um, that I think is the most important reason to protect ourselves from the sun. UV light is a carcinogen, so it can cause skin cancer. So that I think is the number one reason. And then like you mentioned also, photo aging, it can change the appearance of your skin and can worsen some rashes as well. So, okay, good way to start. So another question people were talking about is how long does it take for your skin to be damaged. Is that something that can happen in 10 minutes or five minutes or does it take years? Yeah, so it can take a very short period of time and really the factors that influence that are both your complexion. So people that are very fair skin can burn as quickly as five minutes, 10 minutes. People that are more medium or dark complexion, it can take more than more like 20 or 30 minutes. Um, but it's a combination of that as well as the UV index. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit slower if you're in the shade or if it's an early part of the morning, but midday, no clouds, you're gonna get a lot more sun exposure and burn quicker. Okay, so what are some of those ways that that you think of that are easy ways to protect yourself from the sun? What about you, Joel? What do you tell your lifeguards? Uh, shade, baseball caps, sunglasses, uh, clothing, um, obviously sunscreen is the biggest mm -hmm. part making sure that they cover up all of their skin yep. um, and, you know, taking breaks out of the sun as much as possible. Okay. Okay. What about Ruby? Yes, I think that's all great advice. And then, you know, in addition to covering yourself with shade and photoprotective clothing and hats and glasses and sunscreen, is trying to choose times of the day where the sun is not, doesn't have as high of a UV index. So earlier in the morning, later in the evening, those are also ways to help, help prevent exposure. Good to know. So we brought some props to talk about kind of the best ways to protect your skin from UVs. And I'm curious, so I'm gonna come over here and get these. So there are a couple different things. So obviously, what I see, I see a lot of kids, you know, wearing plastic glasses. Are, do these keep the skin from get, keep the sun from their eyes and their face or maybe not the best idea? I think that um, most sunglasses help in some regard, but um, especially for, for lifeguards, we recommend that they get polarized sunglasses, especially when looking at the water, there can be flares. It helps to uh, prevent the UV damage on their eyes, um, and especially if that's their main focus, is with the water, the loss of that reflection, reflection of the sun up in front of the face. Okay. What about these? These are some of my favorite glasses. I don't think they're great for the sun, though. My tinted purple <laughs> My typical sunglasses. Do these meet the much better the guidelines? I think so. I think okay. so. Okay. All right. We got one more set. So we've got that. Then we've got now hats. So one of the things I heard you say was, you know, when people wear hats, protective clothing. What about baseball caps? Yes, I have an SMU hat. You know? For the face, maybe missing the neck area though. Okay. The neck and ears. I see so okay. much skin cancer on people's ears. They tend to neglect that. 
So hats that kind of cover the ears, the neck are much better. So maybe something more like this one? Yes, yeah, for sure. This covers right, the too. whole thing? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So <laughs> you want to go for a hat that covers your ears mm -hmm. and your neck mm -hmm. and maybe all of your face. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bigger the better. The bigger the better. Okay. So we got through that part. So what about, let's see. So you've got your hat, you've got your glasses, your put sunscreen on how often should you be applying sunscreen realistically Dr. your goal. so we generally recommend that people put on sunscreen every two hours okay there are times when we recommend you put it on even more often so if you're getting in the water if you're sweating a lot a lot of sunscreens will have on them that they're water resistant up to okay. 40 minutes or 80 minutes and so if you're going to be in the water or very active you need to reapply even more than every two hours okay so we've got a follow-up question this one came in online does waterproof sunscreen really work? So the FDA actually has changed even the term waterproof. So sunscreens are not allowed to call themselves waterproof, but they can be water resistant. Okay. And so um, no sunscreen is truly waterproof. It will still come off more quickly than, um, than, you know, than normal. So you want to get a water resistant, okay. but still only 40 to 80 minutes. It's not going to last you the whole day. It's not waterproof. Okay. Not waterproof. Good question. Good question. So we've got one here from Dawn, mm -hmm. and I've heard this before. Is all sun exposure bad for you? That might be one for you as well. So not all sun exposure is bad for you, but it needs to be, you know, really tailored so that you're not getting really high doses all at once. So mm -hmm. a little bit of sun exposure here and there when you're getting in the shade, when you're going from one place to another, when you've got your sunscreen on, you're still getting sun exposure, but it's at much safer level than when you're not protecting yourself. Okay, good to go. So when we're talking about you know people that are in the sun a lot, whether they're lifeguards or whether they maybe work outside in the yards, I mean, what do you tell your lifeguards here at Dallas about sunscreen? Uh, typically, they're pretty good about putting uh, remembering to put sunscreen on. Um, however, there are certain areas um, that are forgotten about. So we have caps, we have sunglasses, yeah. we have shirts that we require them to wear. they go up and are exposed to the sun, uh, let it dry so that it's actually doing something. And then we try to remind them to, uh, you said, the ears, um, tops of their feet are actually a really big spot too because they're walking around all the time in the sun um, and they think, you know, they just completely forget about their feet or not completely protected. They're wearing flip-flops, uh, so that's usually a big spot where we, we like them to focus. Yeah, I've sunburned my feet once before. It was not comfortable. No, how do you wear shoes after? You yeah, can't. you don't. <laughs> so here's a question we got from Mary. She asks, if you are someone who gets freckles, do you have a higher risk of skin cancer? I know I certainly have some freckles. My kids do. In general, if you get freckles, that is a sign that you are more easily sun damaged and that okay. you experience sun damage easier than others. So while freckles themselves are not harmful, they are an indication that your skin is more susceptible and so you should be extra cautious. Okay, good to know. So we have a comment here. This is from Philip. He says, I used SPF 50 in Cuba in water for an hour. Brand new skin one week later. I think he might have burned or something. Not quite sure on that one. But here's a question from Robin. And what SPF do you recommend? So start with you, Dr. Gill, and then I'm curious if there's an SPF you recommend for lifeguards or would you do code to change glasses? So we recommend a minimum of SPF 30 and especially even 50 or higher is good as well, but at least 30 and make sure, you know, one of the biggest problems is people don't apply it correctly. So you should put a whole ounce for your body, which is the size of a shot glass. So a lot of these sunscreen bottles we get, that's enough for about five or six applications. That's it. Wow. So a lot of people are not applying enough. And so it's, you know, not just the SPF getting 30, it needs to be broad spectrum and it needs to be covering, covering you well. So when you go out and speak to schools, Joelle, is that similar information to what you cover? Yes, it's definitely similar. I think um, to add on to that, I see a lot of families quickly rubbing their children down with sunscreens and then sending them off into the water. That really doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, you need it to dry completely um, before you just have them jump in the pool. Otherwise, your pool is just full of sunscreen. Yeah. Okay. okay. So related to Robin's question, what SPF? Does SPF 80 or 100, is that any better than SPF 30? So technically, SPF 30 blocks about 97%. Let me see. 
tip off that you need to have it evaluated. So we've got a lot of questions coming in. This is really great. We've got one here from Mary. This is a, I hear parents debating this all of the time in my groups. Is rub on or spray sunscreen better than the typical, you know, stuff you put on? So, you know what to call that. Yeah, so I, a spray sunscreen can be just as effective as a rub on, but once again, they have to be put on properly. I see a lot of parents doing this, you know, spray. We've got a bunch of questions coming in. Here's one for Brianna. And let's see, this one we'll start with Dr. Gill. Do you recommend going out without sunscreen for 15 minutes to get vitamin D and then putting on sunscreen to protect from sun damage? No, I don't. And the reason is that vitamin D, it really takes a small amount of So we've got one. Now this is interesting. This one came from Kevin. What's the best brand of sunscreen? Or does it really matter? I don't, we don't want to advocate for any specific brand. But are there certain things people should look for? I think the main things to look for are pretty broad spectrum. So covering both UVA and UVB. You want to get a sunscreen that you will use. You know, that's something we say a lot in dermatology. The best sunscreen is the one you will use. So if it's one that you that feels good when you put it on and you like it and you'll wear it, that's excellent. Right. Um, and Consumer Reports actually just came out with a report uh, ranking a lot of the sunscreens and how effective they are. So I would recommend people check that out. That's also another kind of efficacy measure. Okay, so we'll share in the comments after the chat the link to the consumer. It was the Consumer Protection Group. Consumer Reports, actually. Consumer Reports. Mm -hmm. We'll share a link to that for the sunscreen so you can go through and make your own decision. All right, we've got one here, a different one from Jenny. And this one is for, for you. Sure. She's wondering, you know, how does the city of Dallas help share information about skin protection and sun protection at your parks and pools and golf courses and Bahama Beach and all those places you go? Of course. Uh, well, like you had mentioned earlier, we do um, elementary school visits and we do like what typical water safety day and we talk mm -hmm. about things uh, such as sin, uh, skin sa safety and sun safety um, there. We also have an aquatics brochure that goes out uh, mm -hmm. to the general public and is in, uh, located in all of our rec centers nearby um, that has a page dedicated to water safety. Okay. Um, we teach these classes, um, or these topics I should say, in our water safety classes. Okay. Uh, we have them in the mornings, we have them in the evenings, and they're not just for the, uh, the youth, but they're also for adults. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that pretty much covers the the general right. populace that we we um, gear that information sounds like, to. Sounds like you have a lot of out outreach opportunities that you do that are really trying to target the whole population. Yes, we definitely try to not just keep it in house with our lifeguards, but to spread the health of knowledge. Perfect. Well, that is that wonderful. So we've got some more questions coming in here. This one is another one that I've heard. And when you mentioned earlier that and that you've seen, heard of cases where people are in their and they're coming in for skin cancer. You know, Brian wants to know, what is the most common age for skin cancer? So really the co most common age is like you mentioned in the 50s or 60s, that tends to be people who've had a lifetime of chronic sun damage. 
but we still see a lot of young people getting skin cancer. And actually melanoma is one of the most common cancers in young women in their late 20s and early 30s. And so, um, like I said, no age is immune. And so everyone really needs to be diligent about protecting themselves now and in the future. So we've got a couple more questions. We're running low on time, but we have one here. And let's, let's this one is one for both of you. Let's start with Dr. Gildo. It says, how do I keep my kids safe from the sun when they're at school or playing out Bahama Beach. What are some ways they can do that? Let's start with you guys. So this can be really challenging and of course sunscreen is a big part of that. Um, I think photoprotective clothing, if you can get your kids to wear it, is really ideal because okay. then you're not having to constantly reapply when they have those long nice swim shirts. Okay. Um, if you can get them in hats. Um, ideally, you know, it's hard when they're at school because technically sunscreen is considered an over-the-counter medication. So at school they're not able to um, put it on kids during the day and so that's something working to try to change mm -hmm. um, but yeah just keeping sunscreen protective clothing and okay. as a spectator while your kids are doing sports it's important get those canopies over your pull-out chairs or umbrellas gotcha. right, right. Right. And I think also seeking shade mm -hmm. um, in those types of environment um, and training or how to apply it themselves um, I think uh, at some rec centers or at some like uh, summer camps, we cannot apply some cream for a child. Um, right. The sprays are typically the be better kinds because there's no uh, physical touching when, when you have uh, to apply that type of um, sunscreen. Gotcha. I have a question. So I'm going to step off the screen again. So you were talking about clothing earlier. You know, if somebody, like parents or children, wear these kind of rash guard type mm -hmm. things, does it matter? Is is there any benefit to it just being short sleeve or do they really need to be long sleeves? I'd say long is better than short, but short okay. is better than nothing. So, okay. but yeah, the more coverage you get, the better. And then just making sure that it has a UPF rating on it. So it's okay. essentially similar to SPF. Okay. Making sure that it's not very transparent where a lot of sun can come through. Okay, gotcha. Good to know. So we're right, we got five minutes left. So we've got a couple more questions in here. So here's a question that Oh, this is interesting. My teenage sons claim that they don't need sunscreen since they never burn. Shouldn't people still wear sunscreen even if they don't easily burn? That sounds like something you all you hear from all the time. All the time. <laughs> yes. So what, what's the answer to that? Well, like Dr. Gill said, um, whether you have lighter skin or more medium or darker skin, you can be affected by the sun. So um, wear, wear sunscreen. Wear sunscreen. <laughs> are still damaging your yes. skin and I see patients all the time with skin cancer who do not burn or have not burned very often and so wear their sunscreen. Okay and it does skin cancer affects all ethnicities yes. it's not just yes. specific. Yes okay. exactly. Fair skin people are at a higher risk but all races can get all skin cancer. Okay good to know. So I think we're gonna have time for two more questions. We're trying to control the wind so thanks everybody for hanging with us. We've got one here. If someone was sunburned at a young age, how likely does it affect the chances for developing melanoma later in life? That's for you, Dr. Gil. Sure. So there's a lot of studies that have looked at the incidence of people who've had sunburns and blistering sunburns when they were young and associated that with a higher risk, sometimes twofold, sometimes threefold higher risk of getting melanoma later in life. Some of that may be related just to their own body's propensity to burn okay. and to to be sensitive but regardless you know I tell people start your kids out early try to protect them you know at least a quarter of your lifetime um, you know sun exposure happens as a kid and as a child so just start start early okay okay we've got one other question here and this one's the last one is from Kevin is there a way to reverse previous sun damage Okay. Everybody wants to know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, and so this is a little bit of a technicality. There are ways to reverse the appearance of sun damage. So there's okay. lots of things that can be done that can kind of help the appearance of sun damage. And really the best way to attempt to reverse is to start doing better at sun protection. Using that screen, that will go a long way. But in terms of completely reversing, that's, you know, a lot of the damage has, has been done. So it keeps us all diligent and needing to be yeah. steady all the time. this is really the last one. What's the influence of the breakdown products of sun protective chemicals used as sunscreen? 
think that's one for you, maybe? What is the... So what's the influence of breakdown products of subject chemicals? So a lot of people get concerned about the chemicals that are in sunscreens, mm -hmm. and some of these can be broken down, and there have been a lot of studies that um, have raised people's concerns about the safety of this. Mm -hmm. But it's important to recognize that there are no human studies that have shown sunscreens to be unsafe. And so it's clear the sun causes skin cancer, what sunscreen, you know, if any, causes any problems. So I think we're going to be on the safe side. And if you're really worried, go with the photoprotective clothing, go with the hats. You have okay. alternatives. Okay. All right. So we're going to wrap up now. Last minute ideas. Joelle, do you have any last minute message you want to share uh, with, with people <laughs> about sun safety? Yeah, sure. I think um, overall, you know, we, we shared a lot of really important information here. Uh, teach your kids at home, make sure you're uh, applying the sunscreen, staying uh, out of the sun as much as possible, drinking lots of water, and seek the shade. I would say, you know, just be really diligent about protecting yourself from the sun. Skin cancer, it is not as big of a deal when you catch it early, so if you have any spots you're concerned about, go to a doctor. When we catch these things early, we can treat them. Skin cancer can be deadly, and it can um, affect people very young, and it's really hard to see these things happen, so take care of your skin. Letting us use Brawweiler yes. Recreation Pool. It's, been, it's a great facility, definitely beautiful. Thank you to all of you for tuning in. This chat will be available on our Facebook page and we're going to upload it to YouTube later today. So you'll be able to watch it there as well. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you.